welcome to the brew house, everybody. If you guys want to gather around this way more, we'll get a better view of everything going on over here. Uh, we put together this nice visual aid for our visual learners. Uh, that way you can see what's going on inside the different tanks. Uh, but this behind me, this is our brew house. And that big white vessel back there, that's the grist case. So that's the end of the line for the blue conveyor belt. Once we've milled and compiled our grain bill, it's now called the grist. And that's where it's all going to wait before we begin the process. So the next step is sending our grist, all that malted barley, uh, into a separate vessel. And that's called our mash mixer. And that's the vessel directly to the right of our uh, grist case over there. And what's going to go on in there is this is where our second brewing ingredient gets involved. And this is water, of course. 90 to 97% of your beer is made up of water. Who said that beer isn't hydrating? The alcohol might have a slight effect on that. What's going on in the mash mixer is we're steeping the grain at set temperatures for set periods of time, and those temperatures activate enzymatic processes within that malted barley that draw those fermentable sugars out of there. And ours is called a mash mixer. You may have heard them called mash tons in other breweries or on your homebrew setup. Ours is a mash mixer because there's a big helicopter blade at the bottom it's mixing everything around, making this big cereally mush, drawing out all those fermentable sugars from that malted barley from our grain bill. And so the next step of the process is getting all that malted barley out of our liquid because A, we don't want to drink beer with chunky bits of malted barley in it, and B, if that malted barley gets into the boil kettle that happens later on in the process, that will draw tannins out and those taste bad. So to get everything out of that, uh, all that, all that malted barley out of our liquid, we send everything from our mash mixer into a separate vessel and it's called the louder tun. And the way the louder tun works, it is a big false bottom with tiny little holes. And everything from the mash mixer comes in on top and that false bottom catches all the grain and then just the liquid is able to fit those little holes that are too small for the grain to fit through. And what we've created once you've separated just that liquid is basically sugary cereal water. And it's called Wurt, W-O-R-T, rhymes with shirt. And that's all that's happening over here at the brew house is we're making that sugary cereal water we all know and love so much. We call it Wurt. And much, much later in the process, it heads to our fermentation tanks behind you guys, meets up with these sleepy little looking guys. Uh, this is a yeast cell. And the yeast, they eat up those fermentable sugars that we drew out of the malted barley, and they give us ethanol and CO2, your booze and bubbles, and that gives us beer. But all we're doing here at the brew house is making that sugary, seary water we all know and love, and we call it work. So the next step of the process is bringing your work up to a boil. And we get a few things in this process, but you're visiting Green Flash, so most notably, this is where hops tend to get involved for the first time. So let's geek out on hops a little bit. This right here in my hand is a hop vine, and hops grow on vines with a bee, and grapes grow on vines. This is a fake hop vine. Who knew they made fake hop vines? I certainly didn't. I also didn't know they made plushy yeast cells either. Uh, but here it is. What we use off of the hop vine are these conicals here. So the hop farmers, they pick these conicals, and then they dry them out, and they send them to a machine that pelletizes them for us, and so they end up looking like this. So all those boxes you saw in the cold storage room with all the different names of the varietals on them, those were all filled with these pelletized hops. And when you build a brew house, you have to decide right off the bat whether you can use whole hops or pellet hops because it's difficult to switch back and forth once you've made that decision. So a brewery like Green Flash uses so much hops, being so aggressive with our usage of hops, it'd be hard for us to store enough of these for what we would need for our purposes. So we went with pellet hops here. They also last a little longer in cold storage. Uh, most brew houses are using pellet hops these days. I'm only aware of two in the state of California still using whole hops. I the Anchor Steam up in San Francisco and Sierra Nevada up in Chico. Pretty much everybody else is using pellet hops these days. But there's over 50 different varietals of hops in the world. There's new ones coming out all the time. They all lend different flavors and characteristics to your beer. And when you add hops to your boiling work, also changes what you get from those varietals. And we get three things from hops added to our boiling work. We get bitterness, flavor, and aroma. And we get it in that order. So the earlier you're adding hops to your boiling work, those early hop additions are called your bittering hops. And then as the process is going along, you're getting more flavor. And then the very end is where you get that hoppy aroma. The essential oils and hops that give us that hoppy aroma, they're very delicate. They're easy to boil out. That's something you get from the very end of the process. I'll pass this around so you guys can smell it. This is Simcoe hops, one of my personal favorite varietals. Uh, it comes from the Yakima Valley up in Washington. Uh, and that's hops that's our boiling work. The second thing we get from more of our boiling work is bringing the work up to the boil. We're going to get a reduction of our work. So the length of your boil really dictates how your your beer's gonna turn out, much like cooking a sauce on the stove. Has anybody ever tried our barley wine? 
our barley wine or anybody's barley wine. The barley wine style. Is that what you had in your glass over there? There we go. So the barley wine is the biggest beer in our board out there. 10.9% ABV. Big monster of a beer. And that beer goes through a very, very lengthy boiling process. So we're really cooking it down, really going through a lengthy boiling process. And it's very similar to cooking sauce on the stove, no longer you're cooking it. The consistency is becoming thicker, the flavor is bolder, you're cooking the water out of it, you're getting a reduction. So that's what's going on in the boil kettle with those lengthy boils. That really lengthy boil gives barley wine the really sweet malt profile and a mouthfeel when you're drinking it that a lot of people describe as chewy. A nice contrast would be the Saison Diego, that's a beer we're all going to try later on. Uh, Oh yeah, I definitely would not recommend eating a hot pellet. I probably should have warned you guys in case anyone was going to do that. Uh, there's a resin in there that coats your throat. It doesn't allow you to taste taste for hours. Uh, it's also a very terrible chalky consistency. Uh, but the third thing we get from our boiling process is bringing the wort up to a boil sterilizes it. So any weird wild yeast or microbes that may have gotten into those lower temperatures, we're going to cook out of there. That way nothing's competing with these little guys. They really hate competition. Uh, we don't want anything competing with them over there in the fermentation tanks. All right, I know the brew house is a long section. We have two small parts left. You guys still with me? All right. 